Welcome, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb here with AccuVision Acupuncture. Today I want to talk about, actually today I want to continue our conversation about inflammation. Today we're going to talk about inflammation as it relates to your cardiovascular system. All right, and that should be pretty uh, significant and pretty relevant to a lot of people. Now, what kind of conditions, eye conditions specifically, can come about as a result of cardio cardiovascular dysregulation, cardiovascular inflammation. All right, of course, when we talk about cardiovascular, cardio is heart, vascular is the blood vessel system. So that's what we mean by cardiovascular. And we're talking about this specifically as it relates to your vision, because the vascular system, right, the blood vessels run throughout your whole body, uh, specifically your eyes. If you've followed me, you know that the retina is the highest oxygen consuming tissue in the whole body and requires an enormous amount of, of uh, oxygen delivery. There's a lot of, of vasculature, even the smallest blood vessels in the whole body are located in, uh, or in the retina, it's called the choroid. So uh, vascular health is very, very, very important to eye health, brain health, obviously uh, the, the heart system and the cardiac system as well. Um, and of course, it's harder to really track that. So we know that there are ways that we can check cardiovascular activity, right? We can look at uh, things like EKGs. We can look at cholesterol levels. We can even do lab work and look at things like uh, C-reactive protein, homocysteine levels, cholesterol levels, triglyceride levels, uh, HDL and LDL levels. So we're looking at all these different biomarkers or lab results that are going to give us insight about the health of our, our cardiovascular system. So how do we know that this relates to heart, right? And we want to pre prevent specifically things like heart attack and stroke. Uh, those are some of the two leading causes of, of, uh, of death for sure. And again, with this, we want to talk about how it relates to your vision, because again, your vision really requires uh, healthy, uh, unclogged, blood vessels that can deliver food and oxygen to your eyes and to your brain and also help eliminate toxins and remove carbon dioxide. So that whole flow needs to be healthy. We need to have oxygen coming in, food coming in, and we need to have carbon dioxide and waste products coming out. Now, the vascular system is a network of tubes, right? These tubes have uh, a few things can happen. They can either break right? The, the pipes can break and we call that a hemorrhage or a rupture. They can get clogged, right? We call that like you can get a clot, like a blood clot, or you can have ischemia where we have things like fats, cholesterol, or plaque protein build up, and, which clogged the, uh, the artery, the capillary, or the vein. We also can have vascular swelling, right? The blood vessels can swell for various reasons, and that's where inflammation comes in too. So the inflammatory processes can wreak havoc on the vascular system, which in turn can affect your vision. We're going to talk about some conditions uh, that show up with cardiovascular stress. And we're going to also talk about things that you can do to manage vascular inflammation. Uh, in this case, I guess we'll call it ocular vascular or brain vascular system. But keep in mind, it's a whole network of systems. So uh, we can have local vascular issues around the heart, around the eyes, around the brain, uh, or we can have systemic, right? We want to talk about the whole circulatory system. So when we're talking about vascular health, when it comes to vision, the main conditions that come to mind, the obvious conditions that come to mind are eye stroke, right? Ischemia. We have uh, either a hemorrhage, where the blood vessel pops, or we have an ischemia where there's a clogging, an obstruction due to plaque or fats or cholesterol that's clogging the vasculature. Uh, or we can have a blood clot that causes uh, you know, a, a blockage of blood flow, so we're going to have a result of hypoxia and a lack of cellular respiration, which is cellular breathing, and cellular metabolism, which is where the food gets, where the eye cells get food and break down and metabolize them. So, Again, things like eye stroke is really a big deal when it comes to, to vascular health. That's the most common, or the most known, should I say. 
Then we have things like um, optic nerve strokes, AION or NION, non ischemic um, optic nerve issues. So uh, that's really common too. A lot of people know about that. So you have these, these blood flow issues to the optic nerve, either due to obstruction or swelling of the nerves or something like that, that can really give rise to these conditions. We can also have things like macular degeneration, right? A lot of people don't know, even conventional ophthalmologists and retinal specialists are not aware, uh, just because it's not in the literature, that macular degeneration is an extension of cardiovascular disease. It is, without question, right? It's the same situation. Instead of plaque building up around the heart, you have drusen built up around your eyes. So you have these factors going on, and that's just, that's what happens. You have this c c congestion uh, of fat and protein and, and uh, calcium that's built up around your eyes. And of course, you can have an eye attack, um, but you can have, in some cases, like an eye stroke we talked about earlier, but in most cases, you're going to see progressive or accelerated degeneration of the vision, right? And what does the eye do when it doesn't have oxygen, enough oxygen? I'm glad you asked. So the eye will grow new blood vessels. The retina will start to grow new blood vessels to feed the retina the oxygen it needs. And in those cases, specifically wet macular generation in diabetic retinopathy, which is where these, these uh, angiogenesis or neovascularization, which is new blood vessel growth, will occur. And that, again, occurs because there is cardiovascular insufficiency where the blood supply to the retina is insufficient. So we want to, so the body's freaking out and growing these new blood vessels in a desperate attempt to try to get the oxygen and nutrients to the eyes, as well as eliminating carbon dioxide and metabolic waste from the eyes. So that's the cardiovascular process that needs to stay healthy. Now what happens when the cardiovascular system comes under stress from a multitude of different reasons is that we can have cardiovascular inflammation. Right, And it's very easy to detect cardiovascular inflammation through blood work. Uh, unfortunately, that blood work is not super common and it's not recommended by most cardiologists and definitely not your ophthalmologists. They don't even really recommend blood work often, but I want you guys to know about this because when you're getting your blood work done, uh, especially if you have any history of macular degeneration or any eye disease or family history of things like glaucoma, eye strokes, brain strokes, macular generation, you want to get these tests. Get a pencil or a piece of paper, or if you're typing uh, on your computer, you want to put this down. So you also want to get these following tests to check your cardiomarkers above and beyond your cholesterol. All right, you want to check, of course, your cholesterol. This is called your lipid panel. Your lipid panel will check your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your fats, your HDLs, and your LDLs. That just tells the amount of fat or possible congestion in the vascular system? Is there fat clogging your, your blood vessels? It's more important, in my opinion, to know the inflammatory markers and the role of inflammation in your cardiovascular process. Now, how you're gonna know that, again, is these blood tests that you can request that your doctor do next time you go get blood work done. One is called C-reactive protein, CRP for short. C-reactive protein is an incredibly effective and accurate measure of cardio-inflammatory stress, right? If there's inflammation in the body, often your C-reactive protein levels will be elevated. The other test that I recommend is homocysteine. Homocysteine is another nonspecific blood marker or serum marker that will let you know if there's inflammation going on in your body, specifically neurovascular inflammation. There's also tests like sedimentation rate or the sed rate. That'll let you know if the blood is clogged and thick and sticking together, which is also what happens when the blood starts to cook from inflammation. It, it becomes more viscous and less, less thin, right? It thickens up a little bit. So we want to make sure that we're, we're testing those, those as well. So again, C-reactive protein, homocysteine, sedimentation rate. Right, All these are doing is checking your inflammatory rates and they're letting us know if there's something called cytokines, which are inflammatory proteins that are around your body that can be released for a bunch of different reasons. They can be released from stress. They can be released from 
uh, mast cell like cell, like uh, aller allergic reactions, and they can also be released with with viruses. For example, uh, COVID. Recently, we were talking a lot about COVID, and there was a lot of talk about these these cytokine storms where the body produces these and releases these inflammatory chemicals that wreaks havoc on your neurovascular system. Again, that's the nerves and the blood vessels around your, your whole body, specifically your brain and your eyes, which is, is causing a lot of people these long COVID symptoms. So these can be very detrimental, detrimental, def, <laughs> detrimental, sorry guys, to, to your eyes and brain and your whole system. Right, so we want to make sure that we're testing for these. The other test that I really like to test for uh, is a test for something called the MTHFR gene, and that's uh, correlates to clotting factors in the body. It's also folic acid and B12, but there is a clotting factor and a tendency to clotting. Now, a lot of the cardiovascular issues that come about uh, also, or we talked about earlier, can be the result of uh, arterial sclerosis, atherosclerosis ischemia, um, hemorrhages, but also blood clots, right? The blood can get sticky. The proteins around, uh, there, there's proteins that cause the blood to kind of stick together and they'll start to chain up. Um, and when they do that, when the blood starts to stick together and forms clots, it doesn't deliver oxygen throughout the body. It also can get stuck. These blood clots get stuck in the pipes and of course lead to things like embolisms or stroke, eye stroke, brain stroke, stuff like that. Um, or they can get caught in the lungs, as I, I indicated. Um, so anyway, like we, we don't want clots. Like we want our blood to clot, which is what blood does when, you know, if there's an injury or we're bleeding or we get cut or we get, in, you know, uh, some type of laceration or something like that. But inside our body, we don't want a lot of clotting going on. We want to keep the, the mixture thin, so to speak. It's really important. So um, really, really important for you guys to uh, to consider that. So things that I like, and again, this is a really long conversation. We're going to start to break this down for you. This is kind of like an introduction conversation to uh, cardiovascular health as it relates to your vision. So uh, some, I want to give you guys some quick things. We talked about blood work. We talked about some conditions. Uh, and again, one thing I want to mention too, we talked about diabetic uh, retinopathy. What happens with diabetes is the blood sugar goes up and down and up and down. It's called dysglycemia. This dysregulation of blood sugar uh, or, or high levels of blood sugar that exists in the blood is very pro-inflammatory and it can be very uh, degenerative to the body, to the, both the vascular system, the blood, the blood vessels in the body, uh, but also the nerves in the body. So we want to help regulate blood sugar. It's really, really important. So a lot of the nutritional strategies and supplement strategies that will help control inflammation are also designed to regulate your blood sugar and also things like your immune response and your uh, overall general inflammatory response. So which supplements are generally useful uh, to, to deal with cardiovascular stress? So the first thing I like are Omega-3 DHAs, right? Absolutely useful to help bring down the fats in the body and the cholesterol, and they'll balance out the bad fats by adding good fats. So these are fish oils, or if you can't do fish oil because they repeat on you, or maybe you're vegan, you could certainly do uh, plant-based Omega DHAs, uh, which are things like flaxseed oil, uh, olive oil, coconut oil. These, these are all good. Uh, barrage oil are, are really good as well. Uh, other things I really like to help deal with inflammation and help bring down this inflammatory process are things like uh, CBD, right? Uh, cannabidiol is very, very useful. It's one of my favorite things to use for, uh, it actually is one of the strongest anti-inflammatories and will help prevent against things like heart attack, eye stroke, brain stroke, uh, things like that. So uh, also things like turmeric. Turmeric's really useful as well. Same with resveratrol is also very useful. Uh, also, we can look at things like ginger, cayenne. Now, those are useful, but people who have sensitive stomachs, even things like turmeric, uh, can be a little difficult on the stomach, especially if you have like a, a pre-ulcer condition or you have a very acidic stomach. Some people don't do very well taking spicy foods, and of course, cayenne pepper and ginger uh, and um, Turmeric is in the pepper family, so it can be pretty spicy and can be a little bit irritating. Uh, I find CBD not to be super irritating to the digestive system, and therefore I like it as one of the best uh, cardio, cardio markers to help deal with that. 
From a dietary standpoint, we want to go more of vegetarian style based or uh, paleo. We want to do like high fats, uh, high lean proteins, and vegetables, right? Fish proteins, really, really good. Uh, we like that a lot, uh, provided you don't have any, sh- <laughs> any fish allergies. We want to stay away from that. Uh, certainly using those types of supplements will help to alleviate a lot of the inflammatory processes that are going on. So that's where I want to round out this conversation because, again, I could probably spend about six hours talking about uh, cardiovascular uh, health as it relates to your vision. But just the point is that you guys need to know there is a direct correlation between cardiovascular health, cardiovascular inflammation, and a lot of these eye conditions. So as we go more deeper into these conversations, we're going to do more specifics on uh, the different causes of cardiovascular inflammation. Because just like we talked about with inflammation, we need to be specific when we talk about cardiovascular inflammation. What that means is there are a lot of factors that can drive cardiovascular inflammation, just like it'll drive other forms of inflammation. And the ultimate result of cardiovascular inflammation is a breakdown and deterioration of the blood vessels, but also swelling of the blood vessels, right? What happens when blood vessels swell, it increases pressure and reduces blood flow to a certain area. So by taking the inflammatory process out and managing that, we reduce the inflamed, swollen blood vessels that are starting to attenuate and break down and punch holes in them and lose their flexibility and elasticity. And, and reducing the, the plaque and cholesterol and stickiness, these sticky substances that are building up uh, and reduce the blood clotting capacity around these, these, these blood, blood vessels. So I just want you guys to be aware that that is a factor. We are going to dive deeper into this. If you have cardiovascular issues, uh, you are at risk more for macular degeneration, possibly retinal strokes or eye strokes, especially if you've had something like that in the past. And again, this is not to freak you out. It's just to let you know to be aware so there are certain things that you can implement into your your lifestyle, diet, exercise, uh, better sleeping. Again, sleeping at night is really important for vascular health. That's when our cooling system comes online. Our body releases cortisol to help cool the body down and deal with inflammation. Uh, Certainly, we talked earlier about things like alcohol can be very pro-inflammatory. So again, it's a holistic way of looking at your cardiovascular system as it relates to your vision. So that's all for today, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope you found some of that information uh, useful and relevant for you. If you have any questions, please comment or email me or even call our office if you're interested in finding out more about our programs. Again, I'm Dr. Andy Rosenfarb here with AccuVision Acupuncture, where your vision is our mission. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.